So what's good TMG fam, it's your boy Ellen and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel, salute. Now listen, top 20 actors who saved their career, saved their careers with one performance. I mean, they was on their way out the door, bro. They had to, they had to nail this role. They had, they had to just be great, their greatest, you know, or it was over for them, man. You know, how Eminem say, you only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Well, they had already blown, but their careers was going down. But this one performance put them back on track. I hope I'm surprised by some of the people on this list, man. Let's check it out. What the hell's going on here? Two good men are dead. And you guys are fighting over who's going to be the next hot shot, huh? Is that what's happening? Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Welcome to Watch Mojo, And today, we're counting down our picks for the top... What movie was that from? Did they show it? Hold on. Okay, the other guys. Saved their career with one performance. <laughs> this is how I went. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. So now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. I was not expecting that, but I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. Car Jim Carrey's on his list? Are y'all serious? Oh, this list gonna piss me off. For this list, we'll be looking at actors who largely turned their careers around with one movie. We'll be taking into account the state of their respective careers both before and after, as well as the popularity of the role itself. Whether the actor eventually returned to infamy is irrelevant, so long as there was a noticeable uptick in their output after the performances in question. Be sure to let us know your favorite comeback roles in the comments. Number 20, Adam Sandler, Howard Ratner. Uncut Gems. This is how I went. All right? We've known for a long time that Adam Sandler could act. Whether it be from his grounded performance in Punch Drunk Love or the surprisingly serious funny people. However, he's developed a reputation for seeming much more comfortable screwing around on screen through, let's just say, eccentric characters. I'm so sick of that. Why are you so afraid to admit that we are connected? Face it. We share mom's womb. We will womb. All right, this is the first one I don't agree with. I don't agree that Adam Sandler had fell off. He made a few good movies, man. I just think when people consider you falling off, it's because you're not in their face like Kevin Hart is with the movies back to back to back to back and The Rock back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they don't need that many performances and they take little hiatus, man. That don't mean they fell off. Who made Oh, that is just disgusting. Yet in 2019, he blew everyone out of the water with his manic energy in Uncut Gems. Very good movie. Figure out. I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do. Everything I do is not going right. Everything I do is not going right. I don't know what to do. I really don't. It's too soon to tell where his career will take him from here, though he did threaten to make a movie that is so bad on purpose if he wasn't nominated for an Oscar, which he wasn't. Well... Then bring on Grown Ups 3. We deserve it. Number 9. Listen, listen. Hey, Uncut Gym surprised me, bro. If y'all haven't seen that, go go check that out, man. This isn't promo. Go check that out. I was very surprised by that movie. 18. Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. No one ever really doubted Johnny Depp's abilities as an actor prior to 2003, but aside from Sleepy Hollow, he hadn't really starred in anything that had mass appeal, seeming to prefer off-kilter fare like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Though it's easy to forget now, the prospect of Depp headlining an adaptation of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean ride didn't sound all too appealing. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. However, when the first installment in the franchise was released, it was a massive success, and legions of fans popped up overnight to support Depp, who would even earn an Oscar nomination for his work. If you were waiting for the opportune moment, that was it. From there, he went on to become one of the biggest stars in Hollywood for the better part of 15 years. Number 18, Jim Carrey, Dr. Robotnik, Sonic the Hedgehog. Back in the 90s, Jim Another one I don't agree with. Jim Carrey did not fall off. That one performance did not save his career. Uh, I don't agree with this one. Jim Carrey rose to fame portraying wacky characters like Ace Ventura, The Mask, Lloyd Christmas, and The Riddler, just to name a few. 
However, his typical shtick became more and more seldom in the decades to come, with his 2004 turn as Count Olaf in a series of unfortunate events being arguably the last true Carrie performance. Throw in some personal troubles, and it seemed like the carry we knew and loved was gone. I'm, I'm, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I just, uh, you know, there's no meaning to any of this. So I, uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join. And, uh, and, uh, and here I am. Enter Sonic the Hedgehog, where his zany portrayal of classic video game baddie Dr. Robotnik was praised for hearkening back to his previous work. Evil grows in the dark. Though the film was plagued with post-production issues, Carrie is certainly one of the reasons the sequel was greenlit. I was not expecting that, but I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. Number 17, Paul Bettany, Vision, Avengers Age of Ultron. Though Paul Bettany was technically a member of the Marvel Cinematic Universe from the beginning, voicing Jarvis in 2008's Iron Man, he had to wait to get his real shot. Jarvis, you there? In those intervening years, he starred in a slew of critical and commercial failures, be it movies he headlined like Legion and Priest, or those where he acted as a supporting player like The Tourist and Transcendence. Just when it seemed like he didn't know how to pick him, Bettany's MCU investment paid off with the advent of Vision in Avengers Age of Ultron. It's a privilege to be among them. You're unbearably naive. Well. I was born yesterday. A bright spot in a decent enough sequel, Bettany was perfectly cast to play the android, and will be doing so again in the Disney Plus series WandaVision. Wanda and Vision, all we have five bad. This is our home now. I want us to fit in. Number 16, Chris Evans, Captain America. Captain America, the first Avenger. From one MCU cast member to another, Chris Evans got his first chance. Oh! Oh, I didn't make that connection right there. ...to play a superhero in the first two Fantastic Four movies Dang. as Johnny Storm, also known as Human Torch. However, that franchise fizzled out early, and his later attempts to participate in superhero comic book adaptations like Push and The Losers also failed, proving that the fourth time... <laughs> I missed that one too. Man, I'm slipping, bro. ...and the charm, Evans finally landed the perfect role in that of Steve Rogers and the titular hero in Captain America the First Avenger. How'd you feel? <sighs> taller. Um, you look taller. His popularity as the character growing with each subsequent appearance, Evans rounded out his time in the MCU by making fans everywhere weep. Now let's see what he does outside the comic sphere. Very nice. Matter of fact, oh eat shit. No, no. How's that? <laughs> Number 15, Kristen Stewart, Valentine, Clouds of Sills Maria. Not the last actor to be marred by the Twilight Saga that we'll talk about on this list, Kristen Stewart found herself one of the most- I'm sorry, y'all, nothing against y'all, man. But every time I hear, or every time I see, twat. I can't even say it loud in this house, Twilight. Then if she hears it upstairs, then she got to go on this binge and watch every single one of them. And she try to draw me in too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that serious in this house with Twilight. Jeez. Most disliked actors in Hollywood by the series end in 2012. Nessie? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster?! Her affair with Snow White and the Huntsman director Rupert Sanders and subsequent breakup with Twilight co-star Robert Pattinson didn't help matters. Moving somewhat out of the limelight, Stewart built her career back up with a string of indie movies. But the one that made doubters prove she could act came in 2014 with Clouds of Sills Maria. At 20, you saw Sigrid's ambition and you saw her violence because you felt it in yourself. So? So that's what I'm saying. The text is like an object. It's going to change perspective based on where you're standing. She more than held her own working against veteran actor Juliette Binoche and has since returned to the blockbuster scene with 2019's iteration of Charlie's Angels. Number 14, Jennifer Lopez, hey. Ramona Vega, Hustlers. Everybody keeps saying that J-Lo signed the deal with the devil, bro. That's why she's not aging. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you cannot lie, bro. Even in this movie, yes, I watched it, man. J-Lo is just nice. You know what I mean? 
Much like another entry on this list, Jennifer Lopez couldn't be mentioned without evoking the string of romantic comedies she made throughout the 2000s. Though some are popular among a certain demographic like Made in Manhattan and The Wedding Planner, few were positively received from a critical standpoint, with the worst of the bunch coming in the form of Gigli. It's turkey time. Huh? Gobble, gobble. Another surprise 2019 performance, her role in Hustlers as Ramona Vega reminded people why she was such a magnetic star to begin with, receiving a bulk of the praise for the film. Though she wasn't nominated for an Oscar like many had hoped, it did show that JLo still got it. Yeah, she went back to her roots. Y'all remember she used to be a fly girl on In Living Color, so she was a dancer. She went back to her roots, man. You know, we used to say, if only we had known each other back then. You know, maybe we could have looked out for one another. Number 13, Nicolas Cage, Red Miller, Mandy. Even during his critical heyday around the turn of the 21st century, Nicolas Cage could still be described as an unorthodox and mesmerizingly manic screen presence. It's a little obvious, don't you think? Okay, but here's the twist. We find out that, that the killer really suffers from multiple personality disorder. Right? See, he's, he's actually really the cop and the girl. All of them are him. Exacerbated by a slew of financial troubles, it started to seem as if Cage accepted every offer that came his way to make ends meet, gracing us with such esteemed classics such as Knowing and Season of the Witch, whereby his eccentricities turned into overacting. Just when the world began to get nostalgic for him, we were graced with the perfect combination of manic Cage with actual quality in Mandy. <laughs> and drink liquor and just start screaming at yourself, fam, I'm judging you, fam. I don't want to be around you and I don't want to be friends. If you do that in your spare time, bro, I don't want to know you. It remains to be seen what kind of career renaissance may be over the horizon, but if it's anything like Mandy, we're here for it. Number 12, Chris Pratt, Star-Lord, Guardians of the Galaxy. Beginning in 2009, Chris Pratt showed the world just how funny he could be on the NBC sitcom Parks and Recreation as fan favorite Andy Dwyer. Well, I, say, I typed your symptoms into the thing up here and it says you could have network connectivity problems. However, his presence in film remained rather limited for several years, inhabiting only small roles in good movies like Zero Dark Thirty and roles that were memorable for the wrong reasons like his turn in Movie 43. Yet Pratt shocked the world in 2014 when he ditched his schlubby slacker persona and bulked up for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, proving he could be funny and kick-ass. <laughs> this led him to being one of the most bankable stars in Hollywood. Oh, did not know this was the same person. Ah oh, man, I love Jurassic Park and all of them, every single one of them. Ah, fam, I did not know that was him. Following up with more blockbusters like Jurassic World. Number 11, Michael Keaton, Regan Thompson. I know y'all like, oh, how do you not know that, bro? I don't be connecting the dots like that, fam. Thompson, Birdman. And the next time you screech, <laughs> it'll explode into millions of eardrums. You'll glimmer on thousands of screens around the globe. Back in the day, people were skeptical of Keaton's casting as the caped crusader in Tim Burton's Batman movie, though many were silenced when they saw him don the cape and cowl on the big screen. After a One of the best Batmans ever created. Don't argue or debate me about that. This was one of the best. Single sequel, Keaton stepped away from the franchise, which got significantly worse while Keaton did, well, Jack Frost. You the man! No, you the man! Nope. I'm so mad. Keaton stayed relatively quiet for much of the 2000s, but we're sure the meta commentary on his career in 2014's Birdman was too good to pass up. Listen, hold on. That wasn't an accident. What do you mean? I made it happen. Oh, okay. 
The film was a critical sensation, ultimately winning Best Picture and making Keaton an Oscar nominee. Since then, Keaton has been in a slew of big movies, in addition to being another bird-themed character in a superhero movie as the MCU's Vulture. There you go, Mason. Like, what kind of world we live in if we think Michael Keaton has fell off, bro? The Michael Keaton that played in the 1992 film Batman can never fall off in my eyes, bro. <laughs> Business is good. Number 10, Matthew McConaughey, Ron Woodruff, Dallas Buyers Club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, anybody who know what I'm doing know my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies. Through the FDA, I'm gonna be DOA. But I gotta, I gotta sue the hospital to get my medicine. For much of his career, Matthew McConaughey was ridiculed for making a throng of lazy romantic comedies, from failure to launch to ghosts of girlfriends past. He had been the enemy, so I cut it short. Then a little thing called the McConaissance happened, which started slow with movies like The Lincoln Lawyer and Mud, allowing McConaughey to reveal his acting chops in a big way. It crested it in 2013 when he gave an absolutely transformative performance in Dallas Buyers Club. He lost a lot of weight for that role. Look at, look at him, fam. He looks sickly. Club, which saw him pick up numerous critic accolades, culminating in an Oscar for Best Actor. Now we live in a world where McConaughey starring in serious projects like Interstellar and True Detective isn't taken as jokes, but as good marketing ploys, to which we can only say, All right, all right, all right. Number nine, Mickey Rourke, Marv, Sin City. No reason at all to play it quiet. No reason to play it any way but my way. While you could argue that his Oscar-nominated turn in 2008's The Wrestler put Mickey Rourke back in the winner's circle, we maintain that came a little earlier in 2005 with Frank Miller's Sin City. In the neo-noir thriller, he plays Marv, a hard-hitting brute out for revenge and to clear his name for the death of his lover. Though the ensemble film has plenty of memorable characters, he was especially so, as he adopted the tough guy persona we'd know him for then on. In typical career resurgence fashion, he then joined a superhero movie in Iron Man 2, and even reprised his role as Marv in 2014's Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. Looks like trouble. Uh, it looks like Christmas. Number eight, Liam Neeson, Brian Mills. Take in. Believe it or not, there was a time when Liam Neeson was better known as a dramatic actor, with only limited action set pieces in movies like The Phantom Menace and Batman Begins. Though he wasn't exactly starved for work, his career took a turn for the badass in 2008 with a little movie called Taken, in which he single-handedly takes down a procession of scumbags as he rescues his daughter from a sex trafficking ring. Everybody was quoting that movie when it hit the box office or when the, when the previews came out, bro. Everybody was all over that movie. Man, like, that was one that they probably shouldn't have did a, a sequel to. They should have just left it alone. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Opening the floodgates for other middle-aged actors to become action stars, virtually everything Neeson made afterward was an action romp of sorts, from the A-Team to the Grey to Non-Stop to the Commuter. Seriously, the list goes on and on. There's a plan in everything, kid. And I love it when a plan comes together. Number seven, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool. Hey! Deadpool. What? Oh. It's my guy, Ryan Reynolds, man. Deadpool is one of the best. Oh! Oh, hello. I know, right? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I can't tell you, but it does rhyme with Pulverine. Despite being one of the most likable movie stars in the business, Ryan Reynolds was hit with a barrage of box office bombs in the early 2010s. As he'll gladly tell you now, 2011's Green Lantern was far from the crowd pleaser DC had in mind for their iconic hero's first feature. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. We knew he was right for the Merc with a Mouth, but the studio's botching of the character in X-Men Origins Wolverine hardly inspired confidence. Wait, is that you? 
Striker finally figured out how to shut you up. Fortunately, he got the comics accurate solo film we'd been dreaming of in 2016, and it did not disappoint. We just have to thank whoever released the test footage that got the ball rolling. Whether or not that person's name rhymes with Schmeyan Schmenolds. Besides, nobody's getting hurt. <laughs> That guy was already up there when I got here. Number six, Keanu Reeves, John Wick. Now this is something we got to talk about. Keanu Reeves. I am, I, I, I just, I'm not the biggest Keanu Reeves fan, bro. I tried Constantine. Speed was my movie. I'll give you that. Speed. But this John Wick thing, I'm trying, bro. Every time Queen watches it, because she loves that. I just can't get into I don't know what it is about Keanu Reeves, man. Like, if he go back to when he did Speed, I, I'm probably all in invested, bro. But I just can't, I don't know what it is. John Wick. You uh, working again? No, I just sorted some stuff out. Oh, well. I'll leave you be then. Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. We've known for a long time that Keanu Exactly, Matrix was even good. Reeves can kick ass on film, as is evidenced by the first Matrix movie. However, the poor reception to that film's two sequels and later duds like The Day the Earth Stood Still and 47 Ronin signaled that perhaps the action star's best days were behind him, as expressed in the sad Keanu memes. Though we never thought of him as a powerhouse actor, ardent fans of his hoped the perfect role for him would come around. Someone must have been listening as the John Wick movies slowly evolved from sleeper hits to blockbuster sensations. Hey, John. Hey, Harry. Everything all right? Yeah. Everything's fine. Reeves' mania has gotten so big, in fact, that a Matrix 4 practically went from being a long shot to a done deal. People keep asking if I'm back. Wait, what? Matrix 4 is coming? Okay, maybe I can get back invested into the Keanu Reeves and Matrix 4 is coming. And I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Number five, Robert Pattinson, Connie Nikas. Good time. You could, did you guys have done that without you standing next to me being strong? No. Are you feeling this? Are you feeling the as I'm feeling right now? For much of his early career, Robert Pattinson couldn't be mentioned without someone groaning at his identification with the Twilight Saga. Though many defend his involvement citing poor source material, Pattinson spent the better part of five years trying to clear his name. Earning consistently decent marks for several lesser-known indies, it was inevitable that one would put him over the top. And that came in 2017 with Good Time. I think I was a dog in a previous life. soon be available for adoption. I didn't know I was. So they love me so much. Pattinson gave a commandingly manic performance as a criminal evading capture all throughout New York City. Along with The Lighthouse, this gave Pattinson the freedom to basically do whatever he wanted. And apparently what he wants is to be the next on-screen Batman. There's that role again. You don't know what I'm talking about at all. Number four, Marlon Brando, Vito Corleone, The Godfather. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Everyone knew Brando was a heavyweight actor from the get-go with his early work in movies like A Streetcar Named Desire and On the Waterfront, the latter of which he won an Oscar for in 1955. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. However, the 60s saw Brando grow increasingly cynical towards the craft, as an uncharacteristic multi-picture studio signing led to a string of disappointing flops. Despite his infamy for being difficult to work with, Brando transcended all criticisms in 1972 with his embodiment of Mafia Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather. Look how they mask with my boy. Brando commanded the screen yet again, winning his second Oscar and later proved that some of his best work was still ahead with Apocalypse Now. Though the less said about the island of Dr. Moreau, the better. This is the most outrageous spectacle I have ever witnessed. Look at yourself. I understand that I must be shocking to you. Number three, Drew Barrymore, hey. Casey Becker, Scream. Wait, wait, don't hang up. What? I want to talk to you for a second. Long referred to as America's sweetheart, then child actress Drew Barrymore fell out of fashion in her adolescence due to issues attributed to a troubled upbringing. 
By the time Scream came out in 1996, people were intrigued to see what she would do in her 20s as the star of a meta, satirical slasher movie. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Scream was one of the dopest, bro. <laughs> They were in for a huge surprise as the movie's biggest draw was killed off in the opening scene. Naturally, it was a small part, but boy was it the shocking, memorable one she was looking for. She springboarded off that into a career as a romantic comedy lead in films like The Wedding Singer and Never Been Kissed. Suffice it to say, Drew's still got us screaming. <sighs> Number two, John Travolta, Vincent Vega, Pulp Fiction. But you're saying a foot massage don't mean nothing. I'm saying it does. Now look, I've given a million ladies a million foot massages, and they all meant something. Back in the 70s. This one kind of threw me off, you know what I mean? Because I was first introduced to him in, what was it, Look Who's Talking? You know what I mean? So this, when I finally heard of Pulp Fiction, I was thrown off. And is John Travolta could do nothing wrong with back-to-back -back hits in Saturday Night Fever and Grease. However, the 80s were not so kind, as his sequel to the former Staying Alive was panned by critics. Well, in case you don't know this, I used to be pretty incredible myself when I lived in Brooklyn. Really? What happened? I moved to Manhattan. Director Quentin Tarantino has made a career building back up the careers of former stars, but it all started with John Travolta as the alliteratively named Vincent Vega in 1994's Pulp Fiction. Without this, we probably wouldn't have gotten another face off. <laughs> Yo, that joint was crazy right there, man. Still one of the dopest concepts to ever come up with. Fan favorite performance of his in Face Off. Of course, Travolta would soon retarnish his image Crazy. in the year 2000 with Battlefield Earth, from which his career has never fully recovered. But that doesn't take away from this entry's impact. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go home and have a heart attack. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Shia LaBeouf, James Lort, Honey Boy. You stop. You know, shit on me and bring it up the past. I can't get out from under it. And I'll teach you what I know. I'll give you what I have. Sylvester Stallone, Rocky Balboa, Rocky Balboa. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Renee Zellweger, Judy Garland, Judy. Oh, I love you all. Oh. You won't forget me, will you? Promise you won't. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to be notified and swear Tony Stark, Iron Man. What? Could it really have been anyone else? As is now public knowledge, Robert Downey Jr. went through a severe dark period in the late 90s and early 2000s that saw him battle numerous drug addictions. I have a lot of nerve showing up here tonight. Can I at least get a reaction from you? Panic. I would say panic. This took a huge toll on his career, and people were genuinely shocked by his casting as Marvel's Iron Man despite his recently sustained sobriety. I, I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. With this, uh, and that just goes to show y'all, man, all people need is a second chance sometimes. Laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I made, largely public. All reservations evaporated when the film was released, as Downey rode a wave of critical acclaim as the star of one of the best superhero movies of all time. From this, the highest grossing movie franchise was shaped in the form of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which employed Downey for an additional 11 years and made him one of the highest paid stars on the planet. And now you can't even think of it without him. You you can't watch that without him. You know what I'm saying? I am Iron Man. Do you agree with our picks? Not all of them. I don't agree with all of them, but, you know, a good bit of them I did agree with. You know what I'm saying? But not all of them. Y'all let me know in the comment section which ones y'all agree with. Did you agree with me or not disagree? Let me know, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sylvester Stallone. I just, I never really look for Sylvester Stallone with, you know, I don't hold him that high regard when it comes to acting. I just think he made a great movie in Rocky, man. And he just, he was the perfect person. Sometimes it's, it's, it's just that, bro. 
you're the perfect person for that role. Nobody else can do that role but you. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't mean I, I hold this person in high regard for every other thing they do, you know? But y'all get at me. Let me know what y'all think. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe, Instagram, and stay tuned to the next reaction of my piece. Y'all stay solid. Hey.